Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, so again, disclosures, but nothing relevant to this talk. Uh, we've spent a little bit of time talking about the hip joint developing as one intact on log with a cleft that forms and then fully developed by 11 weeks of gestation. Uh, we also heard that the majority of the shape is determined by eight years of age, uh, but it's important to remember those secondary ossification centers that come from the triradiate cartilage, as well as each of those individual bones of the pubis, ilium, and ischium, and when they appear and when they close. So I think some of these uh, hips that you see at nine, 10 years of age that you're worried about maybe being uh, retroverted or decreased anterior coverage, some of that coverage shows up in the uh, mid-teens. Um, and then we've also talked about these two different types of dislocated hips. So something that's referred to as a jump dislocation or infantile hip dislocation, where the acetabulum is smaller in size and the femoral head tends to be larger versus the childhood dislocations, which may be considered as a slide. So they tend to have a larger acetabular volume. So basically, when you're approaching a child and trying to decide whether or not a pelvic osteotomy is required, you need to figure out exactly the type of dysplasia they have and um, you know, how your intervention can affect uh, that, that pelvis. So there are several different osteotomies that are commonly used. Uh, we touched on the Pemberton, the Salter, the Dega. I would just add the San Diego to the mix uh, with all of these uh, people who have um, contributed to our understanding of the acetabulum and different ways to change it. I would just touch base on clarifying the differences between the Dega and the San Diego. I spent some time with um, Professor Chubak to understand the, uh, you know, the details of how the Dega procedure are performed in Poland. Um, and to see how the medial cortex is left intact with the dega, as well as the uh, one centimeter of bone near the sciatic notch versus the San Diego procedure described by Dr. Mubarak and Dr. Wenger, where uh, the medial cortex is cut in the front and back of the acetabulum. So this talk is really to uh, look at whether or not there's actual differences between these types of osteotomies that are performed. And the best way that we thought to analyze this was to use uh, 3D printed models. So we used uh, 3D printed models with dual materials, basically a more flexible material that could be used for the triradiate cartilage and pubic synthesis, and then a more rigid material called ABS that's used for bone. And we had 14 patients with acetabular dysplasia that were evaluated with the preoperative CT scan. We printed models of all of these uh, patients and performed mock surgeries on the 3D prints and analyzed them with this um, 3D uh, technique to quantify the coverage of the uh, femoral head uh, in the 360 degrees around the acetabulum and see how these different procedures affect the different coverage as well as the volume of the acetabulum. So just to touch base a little bit on this 3D analysis technique, uh, this is what a typical acetabulum should look like with the most amount of coverage directly superior or lateral with a coverage angle of 120, uh, which corresponds to a lateral center edge angle of 30 degrees, and then um, more open in the front with less coverage uh, versus more coverage in the back with a typical antiverted acetabulum. And then when we're assessing these patients in clinic and determining you know, where they're deficient and where our surgical procedure should intervene, we compare them to a cohort of age and sex matched normal patients uh, to really define exactly what we're trying to accomplish with our surgery. So in this 3D printed model study, we looked at pre and post operative changes after that mock surgery and did some statistics to compare those differences between osteotomies uh, with the significance that it be less than 0 0.05. So our main findings was that uh, the acetabular volume did change for all four of these osteotomies, uh, but that the Salter osteotomy had a significantly less decrease in the volume at 6% compared to about 15 to 20% for the others. And you can see that Salter was significantly different than the other three. And then in terms of where the coverage changes are happening, so this is a busy slide, but if we look at the five 
clinically significant regions of the pelvis starting directly superior, working your way anterior as well as posterior, you can see that the different osteotomies had different regions that had uh, significant changes in the coverage. So to kind of boil that down with the Salter osteotomy, we found that we got the most coverage directly superior. Uh, with the Pemberton osteotomy and the Dega, we got the most amount of coverage superior, superior, anterior, and anterior. And with the San Diego osteotomy, again, performed in like the traditional published uh, version, we got the most coverage directly superior as well as in the posterior segments. So again, when you're looking at your patients with DDH, this is just another study where we looked at the regions of acetabular deficiency and 74 hips that were treated in our institution, again, compared to 244 control hips for their age and sex matched controls. We found that there was a pretty broad uh, variation in terms of the acetabular dysplasia. So 44% had global dysplasia, 30% had primarily anterior dysplasia, and then the re remainder shown there. So once you understand where the deficiency is and you understand where the coverage from the different procedures can be obtained, you can really um, specify the procedure that's done for each individual patient. So some of the take-home points, this was the first study to define the significant differences in acetabular volume and coverage changes between the four commonly used pediatric pelvic osteotomies. It's important to understand patient-specific acetabular deficiency and utilizing the appropriate osteotomy for that patient. Uh, so in our hands, Salter osteotomy is ideally suited for redirection of an infantile acetabulum that tends to be smaller in volume. And then there are modifications of the DEGA and the San Diego that can be used to give more anterior or posterior coverage depending on what's needed. Thank you.